I'm going to start today by asking everybody who's working on their laptop to put it away for just for a moment. And I would like to set the context by asking each of you to remember what you used to do when you used to play. So I want you just to sit quietly for a moment and I want you to think back to where you were, what you used to do, and who you used to play with. Has everybody got something in mind now of where you used to play? Uh, now I'd like you just to spend a couple of minutes talking to the person sitting next to you about what you used to do when you were playing and where you were and what you were doing. So over to you now to talk. Okay, has everybody had a chance to share something? Um, could I ask any of you, would any of you be willing to tell the whole group uh, what you used to do when you were playing? Who's willing to tell the whole group? I come from a really small village and we did not have a playground <laughs> in my, back in my child times. So we were just playing in the nature, like uh, hiding somewhere with the neighborhood kids and uh, uh, driving with the rollers or something like that. You no, know, no, nothing like really special. Just being around the neighborhood and being alone, no supervision uh, of the adults. So okay, just that's being it. Out by yourselves, <laughs> your your total freedom and control in play. And anybody else? Um, hello, my name is Magdalena. I come from Prague, but actually I used to play in a small village where we have a cottage. And our uh, most intensive play used to be in uh, the uh, center of the village where we used to stay a uh, container for bins, dustbin. And we, <laughs> we try to reach uh, all the stuff from the dustbin and then we play with it. So it's most beautiful play I remember. Very good. Can I have one more? Yeah, I'm Marek Spinka. I'm here from Prague, born here. But um, So I spent most of the year in Prague, but uh, the whole summer uh, in the village. And my like most uh, intensive uh, impression about the own play is how we um, adjusted our own possibility of moving in the environment in terms of using it uh, with uh, the physical um, properties, being it in the small flat or here, uh, you know, on the street, on a courtyard, uh, in the park, or then in the village in large areas or slopes and, and, and things like that. So, um, you know, the own body uh, and the spatial possibilities there and how, how do you accommodate uh, this, uh, this together? Yeah. When you were playing, were those happy times? How many people felt that they were happy times when they were playing? Yeah, I can see people nodding, yeah. And play isn't always happy. Sometimes children have accidents, get upset, but generally when people remember their play, they remember happy times. How many people remembered being outside when they were playing? So quite a few there. And how many remembered indoor play? So generally, more people tend to remember playing outdoors and, and the sort of freedom and control that comes with that in children's play. Um, did any of you do anything naughty? Anything your parents wouldn't have liked? <laughs> yeah. and so always children taking risks in their play and playing out unsupervised, but also looking after each other when they were out and, and actually not coming to serious harm, hopefully. Um, I just want to show you some, do you, final question actually for you. Do you think that children have the same opportunities to play that you did when you were little? No, okay, and, and that's the root of the problem. That, that's really why we're here today, to try to do something about that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some photos, really, over the next 20 minutes or so of some of the play, some of the work that's been done on play in the UK, just to give you ideas, really, and to, to set the context for today. Um, lots and lots of different types of play. Uh, when people think about play, they tend to think of children running around 
but actually children like to be quiet as well when they're playing. So we need play spaces that can allow children to do both of these things. Play might involve playing with equipment, but it might also involve playing with nature, or it might involve both. Being with friends, really important aspect of play. Sometimes the play environment is less important than who you're with. And through play, children, children learn all about the worlds around them. There are many, many different benefits from play, many things that children get from playing. But this is what a typical play area looks like in the UK. Um, is this the kind of place that you used to play when you were children? No, it, it looks very different indeed. Um, we would describe this as an equipment-based approach. So it's all about equipment, uh, safety surfacing and fencing. It's quite expensive. A lot of money has been spent there and a lot of money has been spent on surfacing and fencing that don't really do much for children's play. Um, but this is considered to be safe and it's considered to be very easy to look after. This is more the kind of place a lot of, a lot of us remember playing, but this is often perceived as dangerous because there might be dogs, there, there's no fence, the children might run in the road, and a lot of, a lot of uh, local authorities and municipalities in the UK are very reluctant to do something like this because, because this is considered to be more difficult. So in the UK, we decided it, that there were, there was, it was time for a change, that change was needed. So in 2008, we produced new guidance, which is on our website called Design for Play. And it's based on practical examples of where people have designed something different for play. The key thing for us was we wanted to see, instead of an equipment-led approach, we wanted to see what we call a landscape-led approach. So it's all about the design of the landscape. In the UK, we call that landscape architecture, but you might call it a design-led approach as another way of looking at it. And what I mean by that is that the play area is designed to fit with its landscape. So can you see that in this play area, the equipment has been chosen to suit the site? So it, it fits very well with the natural environment that the playground is in. This is the same playground, and the playground uses the natural contour of the hillside. It's, it's a misapprehension that a playground has to be flat, and the playground can be hilly and can blend in with the natural environment. Also in this playground, they've chosen colors and natural materials that blend in with the natural environment. And again, it's a misunderstanding that everything to do with children has to be bright red and bright blue. And this is actually much more attractive both for adults and for children. And what we really wanted to do when we were designing for children's play was to design uh, play areas that are beautiful and where people of all ages would want to be. It's not all about nature play, though. This is a skate park right in the centre of Milton Keynes, a British city. And it's also been designed to suit its site very well. Um, and the key thing here is they've used colours that complement the buildings and the existing architecture of the city. And they've used very high quality materials. So there's a very strong signal here that children are important and they're right at the heart of the city, right in the town centre. Can you see they're right next to the bus station so they can get there very, very easily. And what the children like here is being next to other people coming and going. It makes them, it makes them feel safe. And so the idea that a play area has to be at the far corner of the park and not in the center of the city. Again, that was another idea that we wanted to challenge. So the second thing we looked at was play areas that are very close to children's homes. Location is really key uh, because children play in, in the in-between times, just after school, just before dinner. And so being able to play somewhere very close to home where they feel safe, where 
they can get very easily to mum and dad and mum and dad can see them. That's very important for children. Here's another skate park. This one this time is very close to the children's homes. And often in the UK, people don't like this. They, they think that they don't want young people hanging around. They want young people to be as far away as possible. But actually, it's very important for children and young people to be right in the heart of the community, close to home. The third thing we looked at when we were looking at play spaces was how play spaces can use natural elements and elements of nature. And so this first one we looked at was what we call landform in the UK, uh, changes of level. So this site was flat, but they've built it up using landform and minding to, to completely transform the site. And you can use this in many ways. It can be used for seating or boundaries or, or it creates all kinds of effects where children can run around or hide. The second natural element we looked at was planting. Uh, really important planting. It's sensory, it's beautiful, it makes it a very pleasant space for everybody. And it changes with the seasons. So that first typical play area that we saw, that doesn't change, that looks the same the whole year round. Very important for children that, that things change and they experience the change of seasons. This play space is on a very, very rough housing estate in London, but it's been transformed just by going out and planting bulbs with the children, and it's now a beautiful space. The fourth thing we looked at was providing a range of different opportunities for play. So finally, we get to play itself. And in this play space, they've got the equipment, but they've extended the play, what the children can do with the equipment by using sand and grit. So two different, two different substances with a different look and feel. But also, these are substances where uh, they act as a safety surface. So if a child falls off the tower, then that that absorbs the impact, but also the children can just play with the sand. And sand reflects the light, and so it makes the play space very light on, on sunny days and makes that a very attractive place to be. Water is another natural element that's really important for children, and our advice would be to keep it very simple with water. You, you don't need big fountains and expensive water features. We would say use the simplest, cheapest water pump. Even a hose pipe is, is good because the children get just as much out of that as some of the more expensive features and it's less likely to break. And then you can use these things in lots of different combinations. So here we have sand and water together and here we have sand and water and planting and the children have just used a water fountain here to collect the water for themselves in bottles. More sand and water and planting. And here we have grass of different lengths, so grass also is a good surface to use. And here we have grass and landform together. How many people can remember doing that when they were children? So an important thing to choose uh, to include when you're designing for children's play. Mud. Children love playing with mud, uh, but this is challenging. This is challenging because a lot of parents don't like this and, and uh, it's quite risky for a designer to deliberately include an area that's going to get muddy, but children do love that. Uh, the fifth thing we looked at was accessibility and inclusion of disabled children and the importance of that. And we would say choose equipment and choose features that different ages and abilities can play with in different ways and play with together. Um, and choose things that are sensory and tactile that children can look at and touch and feel. But also that we can use sand. Many disabled children love to play with sand and Often sand is taken out because a wheelchair can't go right through it, but often children in wheelchairs like to be lifted out into the sand or to sit in a rug on sand. So sand is also important for disabled children too. Engagement. 
with the community. Consultation is very, is, is very, very important. Uh, we would say in consultation, you must keep the focus on play and not on all the other demands like keeping it safe and keeping the maintenance budget low. Uh, we suggest that people ask adults to remember when they played and to ask children what they would like to do rather than just showing them a, an equipment catalogue and asking them to choose. And seventh area we've had was about different ages being able to play together. So putting in things that are flexible. This is a piece of play equipment, but it can also be used as seating. And avoid segregating different ages. So older ones and younger ones can play together. Uh, we asked the question about boundaries and fences. Do you need them? Do you actually need a fence? Um, if you have no fencing, that means that the children and young people can move freely around the site and so, can, and so can everybody else. It's also much, much more flexible as a layout. If you decide you do need boundaries, boundaries don't have to be a fence. This, this is a traditional Cornish wall. This, this playground is in Cornwall, down in the southwest of the UK. And it's a very beautiful wall, but it can also be played on because children love to walk along a wall. And so a wall is often a good choice or a hedge as opposed to a fence, which you can't do so much with. Uh, different people use equipment in different ways and not always how the manufacturer says. So here we have a mother and a baby using a piece of equipment. And here we have two children using the same equipment. And this is probably the age that the manufacturer had in mind. And this is how a teenager uses the equipment <laughs> to hang out. And you can use the same piece of equipment in different combinations to create lots of different effects. Different age ranges will use the play area at different times of day, and, and that's okay. And children will always come up with a different way of using it that you haven't thought of. So this, this is meant to be a seat, but the children have decided it's a golf course. Building in risk and challenge is really important uh, because if children don't experience risk and challenge in their play, then they get bored very quickly and they, they seek their risk and challenge elsewhere. Um, in the UK, the law is that play areas must be as safe as is reasonably practicable. And in the UK, the, the, the law is that you must carry out a risk assessment or a risk benefit assessment. And we have a workshop on that later on where we'll talk more about how you can do this in practice, but it's about not just eliminating the risks or anything hazardous, because then you would eliminate almost anything. You would eliminate water for sure. You would eliminate uh, sand. All kinds of things would be eliminated. But in the UK, we now have to weigh up the benefits of those materials before we come to an assessment of, of what is acceptable in a play area. And different ages will use equipment in different ways. So what's, what's risky for this little guy is maybe, is maybe not so risky for an older child, but children of all ages will seek out risks. And so even a piece of equipment that's quite mundane uh, can be risky depending on the child that's using it. The second last point we had when we were looking at play areas was the importance of maintenance and looking after the space. Um, I think it sends a really strong signal to children that they're important when a space is looked after properly. And this is something we're not good at in the UK. Play spaces are often not well looked after. And, and that's very sad, and it's also a huge waste of money because some play spaces are very expensive, so to not look after them is really not good. And so higher priority needs to be, needs to be there for maintaining and looking after the play space after it's been designed. We encourage uh, parks maintenance officers to leave some some things lying around in the park, like, for instance, this fallen tree, because children love to play with a fallen tree. And 
we, we call it loose parts, that when children like find things or take things and use them to adapt the environment. And our last point really is to, to review and play spaces and to allow for evolution and change in future. And, and one of the easiest ways to do that is to leave the play space unfenced. So this play space uh, has gradually grown over a period of time with things being added and it's very easy to do that because it is unfenced. And that, that's it, these, these are my slides for the moment. Thank you for listening and uh, I'm very happy to take any questions. <laughs>